and all of the things of that sort. And the author himself came to do an interview with Art of Dialogues to speak about the memoir. You guys got to hear what he said. This is kind of interesting because he kind of, uh, listen to this. T. Millwood is not really affiliated or associated with Tupac in any kind of way as Tupac the artist. Let's be clear about that. Sure. Find that to be a red flag and how people doubt what's actually in this I book. don't know because the way I look at it is on my if they if you know about my other cases and how I do this I am cryptic sometimes I am going to uh, play on words sometimes when you're trying to change a paradigm about something you can't just tell them straight out so what I'm getting at is to me in if you guys say the black community African American community I was asked to do that it was sort of a condition this was a cat and mouse game for, for about eight months. I had him, I lost him, I had him, I lost him. And there's multiple people. I don't mean one person. And like I said, whatever, you know, I could change my name tomorrow. The, the, it's fluid. If I wanted to go back into the account, I could put it to Chris Todd. For right now, I'm going to let it ride. And, and, and I totally understand. Wait, it. so this guy has, he's going by the name Jamal Millwood? All right, this is, all right, this is a scam. Chat, look at look at this guy. Does this guy look like a Jamal? But you can understand when you put. I do understand. You you, you you do understand, and so from that, in dealing with something that is alleged to deal with uh, Kim Porter, sure, you know, it's and sensitive. It, 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 yeah, it's absolutely. But I'd ask you, like, what if a black guy wrote a book and he said his name was John? Should white people come out and go, wait, 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 whoa, 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 that guy's name is John? <laughs> Doesn't sound like a black guy's name. Well, well, we have John Sally. I understand. We have uh, John. But do you understand? We have, yeah, we, we have John Amos, but I'm yeah. saying John's John Todd. Todd's a white name, but I know black guys are named Todd but too. Jamal, Todd but Bridges. Jamal, but Jamal, mm -hmm. Mashburn, Jamal. Sir. We we can go, I don't know no white man named Jamal. That's a fact. I've never met a that's white a good, guy. That's, that's a fair point. Never. I never met a, a Latino so brother. I've right. never, never. It's it's simply this. It's right. just not that. And so that's the that's the problem that I think most people sure. had in relation to that. And maybe I should have thought of it a little more. And I and I respect that totally. If you really look at my thing, sometimes I just do it. Like it's really hard to explain. I don't always think it all the way through. So, Lawan Delane, a close friend of Kim Porter, has publicly called the alleged uh, memoir full of lies. How do you respond to these allegations? I don't believe LaWanda has the flash drive, does she? What? I wouldn't think so. So, According so, so this guy's like whole demeanor is that he got a flash drive from a friend or a family relative of Kim Porter that had her memoir on it. And somehow he published it under the author name Jamal to you you have the flash drive on that note nobody has seen the flash drive well that's not true i mean publicly where they can verify not publicly there's multiple people who've seen the flash drive flash drive mm -hmm. um do you plan on at any time introducing the flash drive to any network or anybody that wants to see it to view the metadata involved in that flash drive as to time, yes. dates, and yes. stamps. Yeah. And and when would, when would you be doing that? Well, there's tapes on the flash drive. Yeah, this thing is a scammer. The, the, no, I'm, I'm, I'm specifically no, I'm talking just, about... I'm saying all of it. Yeah, just think of it like a totality. Well, well, not even the totality. I haven't shown anything from it yet. Okay, so not even the totality of it, but simply the metadata. Yeah. Well, uh, someone... As to time sure. when, when alleged that this was uh, purportedly written by Kim dates times because I understand the book really doesn't have a structural date time it's basically she left a lot of the dates out so it's hard to know what award ceremony they're at I had to research a lot of stuff too okay some of the things I couldn't peg down the date at all okay because she's not putting in the exact 1996 like she's not saying that okay and it jumps a lot of it jumps around okay I do believe Kim was writing it over a multi-year period. Okay. So she's putting some stuff here, then she's combining these things later. Or remember, all writers do this too. You think back to the event and you play it out in your head. So I, so as I've said, yeah. So she was to Kim Porter or is, is alleged to be close sure. to Kim Porter. 
would have had a conversation to know whether she was working on a tell-all book, mm -hmm. um, any kind of, because what I understand, uh, Kim Porter was working on children's books. Um, and so in any of your uh, talking to the people who allegedly gave you uh, this a uh, flash drive, there was no mention of, about children's books, her, her children's books that she was planning on writing? No? Nope. Okay. Nah, they exposing the shit out of this guy. Uh, what was your source for the claim about Diddy's alleged abuse towards Kim Porter, despite people close to her, including LaWanda Lane, denying it? What is what is my feeling of how I prove that Diddy was abusive to Kim herself? Well, uh, multiple sources I talked to about that he was abusive. We have the we have the whole story about Saint Tropez on the yacht, the broken nose. So I researched the heck out of that. Um, her getting hit with the chair that I... Yo, Chad, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I love my white people, but anytime there's some black drama and fuckery, there's always some white man who's coming in with scammer vibes who said, y'all niggas is making too much bread out here. Let me come Let me come take some off the top. You feel what I'm saying? Who the, who the fuck is this guy, right? Like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Chat. Hold on. Give you the hardest fight out of anybody on stage. On. Here. This guy TKOs people. When I knock people out, they don't move. You're not Who the f is that guy? <laughs> Who the fuck is this? <laughs> Released that radar put out first. That was the first thing I ever leaked. What, what, Kim said she was hit by a chair, not me. No, when, right. when, uh, when, when was, when did this allegedly happen? That has to be after, well, the years, we don't know the exact time because I can't even pull the hospital records. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the exact moment of that. The picture I have that I released mm -hmm. with the lip and the blood on the nose, that has to be post 2009 in LA. That's at her Tulu. Uh, um, by the way, John Smith. <laughs> Uh, oh, never mind, never mind. Um, Maddie, ma ma Maddie's, oh, by the way, someone told me that Drake liked Cole's Kendrick, uh, Cole's post, so Drake liked the song post on Instagram, okay, and, um, let me see, somebody says, author is using Tupac's old moniker, which is Jamal T. Millwood, is, is that Tupac, Tupac, Jamal T. Millwood. What the hell? That's Tupac's alias? Interesting. Luca Lake House. As for the chair, I don't know the exact year of when that happened. So um, Radar, on, Radar Online actually released that article. Because of me. Because of you. Yeah. Um, and when did they? They didn't have anything. When did, they, anything. when did they do that? That was a, a month ago. A month ago before the book came yep. out? And so yep. you leaked that to Radar Online? Yes. Okay. Uh, we yeah. talked, we leaked the pages that talk about her getting hit by the chair and waking up in the hospital and seeing the man who put her there. That was what was given to, to Radar and some other pages. They never got the full thing. They, 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 they made that up. So I'm going to straighten that out right now with them. Who and made that up? Radar. They never had the whole thing. They, they printed that they did. So Radar Online basically. They have five pages. Okay. Radar Online seen what? They saw what to get this? I didn't even give them the picture either. I showed it to them through a Zoom call. I didn't give it to them. This the Daily Mail was given the first Kim of... Kim Porter abuse photo was given to the Daily Mail on a one-time use. That's the photo you see with the blood, the lip, she's crying, she's looking in the mirror, her friend's taking a photo of her. No one ever saw that. That photo doesn't exist because it's on the flash drive. So that's what people, they're not really, and I already tried to release some other photos. In a conversation uh, that happened between Kim, P. Diddy, and Faith, that P. Diddy. P. Diddy is at Biggie. So 
Is it a little bit coming from his camp? And did Sean Combs okay. say Egger on to do it? Maybe. I, I don't know. Okay, I can't so, fully so basically you don't know. So that I'm saying I don't fully know if if there's some liberty with what she's saying and she's trying to blend Tupac's version and Sean's version together. Tupac's version of what? I want to move on. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Because you're because you're asking me like these very specific things. I don't. I can't. I don't know what she's trying to do there. The, the reason the reason why I asked that is because I was actually there when they met. Okay. I was with I was, Tupac and met Faith. Okay. Cool. Right. And so what I'm trying to clarify is. Then you might know more than. Well, I not that I know more than you. I'm just trying to get to the truth and the facts and the heart of the matter. Sure. In relation to the book. Sure. And what's being said in the book. And so that you can't clarify that to me. Correct. I totally understand that. And you wish to move on. Sure. Okay. Um, Damn. LaWanda Lane also stated that Kim Porter couldn't even work a computer. How does this align with the portrayal of Kim Porter's involvement in creating digital records of Diddy's alleged activities? I don't know why anybody would say they don't know how to use a computer. So she's trying to say Kim's computer illiterate. I I, I don't believe that. I'm not, I don't think that she's trying to say as a friend, as a close friend, somebody. No, she's saying that to try to undermine what we're doing. She's so it, it's kind of insulting. But if I said you didn't know how to use a computer, how would that look in the in the, the modern age? If you knew me. Yeah. And I know a lot of people who can't use cell phones. We're saying correct. And what they understand from between any people at all. There are things hidden from that person and there are things told for a reason that aren't always true. So and people are brilliant like this. OK, so whether Faith might give you a different answer, Biggie. Yeah, this yeah, this guy, he's good. Like He really hit a lick. I wonder if he kept all the revenue. This narrative. The tapes. So you actually have tapes. He claims he has Diddy tapes. I'm not going to do fully comment. Let's just say there's tapes that exist. Yeah. Do you have? Well, let's. That are on let's let's ponder drive. let's ponder around that. There's the two. investigators in the case that is now filed, yes, right, say that they are in possession of tapes. They can actually confirm that there are tapes, sure. as well as baby oil, as well as all of sure. the other things that yes. they found. Yeah, and so with that, we do know from that perspective that the DA involving the case that Diddy is now facing, the federal government. Yes, yeah. the the DA and the federal government. Yep have tapes attorney general and so my question is um there's a claim that uh porter kept copies of and this is in your book yes that she kept copies of diddy's alleged tapes as leverage yes. right and in making that it would be assumed that you would or the possession of those tapes you've seen them you have them you know about them um and like i said what evidence do you have to support the narrative Yes, there are tapes that exist. Okay. Guys, look at look at his body language. Uh, the book alleges that Diddy kept a vault of tapes documenting his alleged sexual encounters. Was there any hard evidence that such a vault existed? Uh, the sources say there was a vault that existed, yes. And some of the tapes were flown out of the country on a private jet. The tapes were flown out of the country on private jet. Yo, this nigga think we that stupid. Nigga, a VHS tape. We got to imagine this VHS tape is like that long ago. Just burn the motherfucker. Incinerate it. Do anything to get rid of it. Why would they need to be flown out of the country on private jet? Yo, this nigga really think we dumb as shit. That's from the sources directly. So I have to believe them. If she's angry. If she was abused, if she's fighting back, because we know through, and I'm going to reveal some of these other things that are on the drive that discuss why she was doing it and when. Okay. So you did, these are other things that you didn't include in, correct. in, 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 in why did you keep that correct. out? Correct. Because I can't reveal everything at once. It's too shocking. If I was to release those tapes, the world would shut down. What? If I showed one of these tapes, so I'm telling the, you right now, the whole 
music industry and Hollywood, it would just grind down like this. They're all Yo, let me tell you this, chat. Hey, right now, everybody, yo, let me tell you this. Being broke is one of the biggest diseases, bro. Niggas heard that Diddy was giving out money and everybody coming out of the woodworks. Now, the women, they're easier to go get their little payday because they're going to be like, yo, he put some, he put GHB in, in the baby oil and he fucked me and he had me doing all type of shit I didn't want to do. He had me in a freak off and I ain't never want to be in the damn freak off, right? So that's the woman's call. But the niggas are saying, damn, how we could go get part of this like griff right here? How we going to get some of the money? Then you see a bum ass nigga like this. He's just coming up with some shit randomly. We're going to start pointing at each other like this, and it's going to be bad. We've already set it up. We have multiple attorneys. We know how to do it. It's not my first rodeo. I solved the greatest murder case in history. Three of them. I know how to do it. We're going to do it, but just going to come in pieces. And there's also ways we can, let's say, not censor it, but we can we can kind of soften it, right? Like the tape, the whole tape doesn't have to come out. All the I don't have all the tapes. There's other people that have the tapes. I can't control them. We already know they're shopping in Hollywood. We have proof of other people telling us we actually didn't have that one they showed. So there's multiple out there. Remember, this has been going on for 30 years. So I'm not the only one who has them. I think I have specific ones that no one has. But so, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be extremely shocking. We've got to be really just kind of one step at a time. But so. you can confirm nor deny that what you claim to have um, that no one else has, correct? Some of, I would say this, let's say, let's say there's 10 tapes, right? So this is a hypothetical. Yeah. Hypothetically, there's 10 tapes. There's a couple of those that no one has, but, but, but the flash drive has. I can pretty much guarantee. And how, how can you? Because if, because if anybody has those, they're going to go to jail. Wait, what? If they release what I believe they think they have or they want to release, they will they will most likely go to jail. That's why that that sounds like child pornography. So he's almost like inadvertently in a roundabout way saying that he has a a, a flash drive with child pornography. What? We're and this is federal this government is, so, we're working with the federal government. Oh, you're currently we're, working yes. with the federal government. We, well, not like what you're saying. Not, no, 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 no. I want to be clear. I'm, I don't want to make We're any. We're going to give them to the federal government. Oh, so you're going to give oh, the yes. tapes to the federal oh, government? Yes. Okay. What the fuck? Threatened legal action, calling the book fake. How do you address uh, his challenge to the authenticity of the alleged memoir? Al doesn't have the flash drive. So how would he know? How does he know if what, what Kim wrote? And Al wasn't fully in Kim's life. So I'm not going to bring up some personal stuff about Al B. Shore and his son and Diddy adopting him. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. But if he wants to have a conversation, he have a conversation. He wants to sue Jeff Bezos, good luck. But he recently filed a cease and desist order. Correct. You, you are aware of that. Yeah, he they leaked it to the media before they gave it to me. So let's let's first. Let's, why don't we talk about that first? Okay, so yeah. so basically you're saying that Al mm -hmm. Shore leaked Given to the New York Post before I received it. What's up? Have you received it yet? Yes, I did receive it. You did receive mm -hmm. it? And the reason- But why would you send it to the media before you show it to me? Because you want media, because you want press. So I know what he's doing. He wants to lock horns. Be careful. Look me up. Look at my other lawsuit. 40 million in Miami. Go, go look at what I'm doing over there. He's- at Let's Google this guy. So his name is Chris Todd, right? Chris Todd, lawsuit Miami. Where's his lawsuit? Uh, State of Florida versus, nah, this can't be it. Uh -uh. I, don't, I think text out in the book. It's not even it doesn't even say it. So he's going to he's going to try to file a lawsuit against one of the biggest companies in the world. And their lawyers are going to open the book and go, I don't know what's going on. Let me read. They're going to see a bunch of X's. 
It doesn't even say it. Say it. Now, if defamation by implication, when you imply something, yeah, they might have a peg leg to stand on with that. But still, again, he's in like half a page, okay? I didn't say it. She said it, okay? Now, I almost didn't want to put it in there, I will admit. And I'm considering removing that chapter. I am. Kim Porter's children, as well as Diddy himself through his lawyer, have dismissed the book as an attempt to capitalize on her death. How do you respond to these criticisms? Are they going to make comments about the victims of Sean Combs, or are they just going to focus on trying to call the memoir fake? Let's see their statement about all the victims. There's going to be 50 new ones coming out. I'd like to see them make statements about that before we start responding to what Kim did. I've done a lot of cases. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff of parents, sisters, brothers, kids. I've seen things that'll make your head spin backwards, okay? So we have to kind of just ride it out, see what happens, okay? Other Wait, are y'all telling me what to search? Todd, Christoph, is it this? This is him. I'm trying to pull him up to see if, what's his history? He's raised $12.5 million for this. Huh. Hmm. Is this him right here? Yeah, I, I could only see this new shit. Other people are starting to come forward already. They're already starting to corroborate. And some people are denying. We know that. It's not my first rodeo. It's not my first book. I know what's, I already know what's coming. I already knew the family would say that. Okay. So I respect them. If they want to talk to me, then have a conversation with me. It's not a money grab. These people have 20 times more money than I do. No one can say like money grab. Hollywood already owes me like $20 million. So when anybody says anything about money to me, just, just be careful. Like, this guy's full of shit. Not gonna lie to you. There's a claim that uh, Kim Porter kept copies of Diddy's alleged sex tapes as leverage. What evidence do you have to support? Okay, we heard that one already. Anything involving Jay Z? There's tapes of them, yeah. No, you have tapes. Mm -hmm. You are in possession of... Well, I'm not going to comment about what the word possession means, but there are tapes of them, yeah. No, I'm saying you, you've you seen those tapes? No comment. Because that that's a... You're talking about a criminal investigation? No, no, I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. But I'm saying what evidence or testimony supports the explosive claims? Kim saying it, so we start with her. Okay. So if Kim says when she calls him the two Shans, and I really wasn't big on that whole thing anyway, it's very brief when it's talked about that. Talking about Jamie also, I know what you're talking about when she mentions that. The first source is Kim herself. Through research, through investigators, PIs, all the people with me, yes, we believe that it is true. Okay? If you're asking for like a tape and this, no. There's no tape of Diddy with them that I'm going to comment on. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there's no tape that you know that exists. I'm not commenting on that. Okay. With those people that the name. No, I'm not. The, the reason, the reason, no, and like I said. Yeah, this guy is smart enough to try to avoid certain type of litigation. That's why he's not saying it. But he knows people are so nefar um, so cynical that him just saying certain things like, yo, I, yo I've i seen a tape that could shut the whole industry down. All right, who's in the tape? Mm, I ain't going to say that because that person could sue me. Uh, so I'm just going to like kind of like dangle a carrot in the air. Once again, not that you have to comment on 
anything particular. Uh, yeah, this guy's full of shit. What, what, what shit is entertaining? <laughs> might say a different answer. Well, I asked, no, the reason why I asked that, because like I said, once again, sure. I'm just trying to... Um, You're and, trying to and, date it, yeah. And, and the facts, like I said, because sure. the book... Do you really think he's going to talk to me? Do you think he's going to admit to that? I don't have an answer for that. Okay, I'm, I'm not, just giving I'm, you... I'm, 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 Will Smith would say... Can I, can I say something? What do you think Will Smith would say? Oh, they had said that Will Smith was on one of these tapes getting piped down by Diddy. Like, Diddy was, like, long dicking him. Um, and I know, pause, but, like, that's what that's what this guy was saying. And I guess the, um, the interviewers asked him about these claims. That this stuff was true. Did it, like I stated before, did I go call these celebrities personally? No. Okay? I had some people try to reach out to them. We never really spoke directly to the people. I don't need to. I don't need to. I'm not the cops. I'm not saying they're doing anything illegal. Okay. I am a conduit that they make a joke about me. When I say that I am doing this for Kim, whatever she wrote, did I research every single little thing? Obviously I did my investigation. I believed it was real. So I published it. That's it. As for every little thing and you're doing a great job. I totally get what you're doing and it's you can ask me anything you want but. the reason the reason why i'm asking this because these are serious what do you think will smith would say can i can i say something what do you think will smith would say if i called him up on his cell phone i pull his number through a pi right and i call him up and i go when kim was pregnant she says she's on the phone with you and that sean's on the phone with you will and that he's talking about this do you think he's going to admit that that really happened right now with everything that's going on with Sean Combs and all these celebrities are silent right now? Do you really think he's going to talk to me? Do you think he's going to admit to that? I don't have an answer for that. Okay, I'm, I'm not, just giving I'm, you. I'm, 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 just, I'm not. I'm not. The reason yeah. why I'm saying this because, like I said, this is something that is alleged that Kim said. Sure. And so when you ask me that question in regards to Will Smith, I'm saying to you. Um, I'm, that's the example, though. Yeah, yeah, that, not, I, I understand that. But like I said, when we when we talk about the the encounters involving uh, a Kim Porter's alleged encounters with other high profile figures, mm -hmm. I just gave you. Yo, I know, yo, I know a finesse when I see one, bro. The example of Tupac in a situation involving that, and how the timeline doesn't add up to what Kim said in, in the, that particular in, 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 in the Essence article as well as the picture that was dated from that actual party mm -hmm. when her and Sean Combs sure. actually first started to date. Sure. And so the alleged um, on and off relationship. So when I ask about the Kim Porter alleged sexual encounters, I'm asking you, um, how did you substantiate these? So there was no video? A sex tape of Will Smith? Of, no, of, of if anything involving Kim Porter. A video of her having sex? No, of any, 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 like, let me repeat the question for you. The alleged memoir makes controversial claims about Kim Porter's alleged sexual encounters with high profile, with other high profile figures. Mm -hmm. How did you substantiate these details? There's no videos of her. There's right. videos of Sean Combs with people, okay. not, not Kim with people. Okay. So the answer is no. There's no photos of anything like that. Even the photos that were first given to me with the book, there are no photos of celebrities in their underwear. There's none of that. Okay. Um, there's another part of the flash drive. I, it's hard to say this. I don't have all of that right now. There's multiple. We'll just say that. So I've not been allowed to see every single thing. Okay. Um, and then as for trying to, I'm not going to call up famous people and ask them if they had sex with, with Kim and Diddy. I'm not going to do it. Well, but that's what the book alleges. Correct. And so, and the reason why I'm asking that, because like I said, this is the art of dialogue yes. and we want to sit down and have a real true dialogue. This is not mm -hmm. about, you know, the promotion of the book or sure. the lack thereof. And I think more people are informed about what it actually mm -hmm. is and isn't. Sure. And so basically the answer is you don't have any. Um, I have what Kim said. Right. You have what So if you came to me, let me answer. Okay. If you came to me and you wanted to tell me your life story. Right. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to investigate it behind you a little bit. Mm -hmm. But if I believe what you're saying is true, I'm not going to call you a liar and I'm going to publish it. Right. But but once again, we have not seen the hard drive. 
We, we have not seen that it, if it actually comes from Kim. We don't know that. Sure. As the public, the people who are watching this, Correct. they don't know that. And so the reason why the question is being asked sure. basically is, so it's alleged that that was it, but you don't have any proof, concrete video. All right, this nigga lying, bro. All right, enough is enough. Enough is enough, Chad. All right, got you. Okay, uh, let's move on from there. Um, we will get to, uh, did he file an explosive letter in motion in court where essentially he wants the federal government to be sanctioned and to be reprimanded by the a U.S. Um, district judge basically because he feels like the feds has tainted his, you know, God-given right or, you know, right under, you know, um, the law that his discovery should you know he, he has a right to a fair trial and he feels like they have tainted that process with doing certain things that are interfering with him having a fair trial including leaking the cassie video actually let me get into that right now and we'll go through really quickly i know th this is some legal shit here so we're gonna go through it real i, I have the document by the way, thank you guys if you guys been been rocking. Again, we went to a detour because of the J. Cole stuff, but, you know, shit, shit. we we rather talk about that than some of these things respectfully. You get what I'm saying? All right. Oh, my God. Hold on. Computer acting slow. What the hell? I feel like my ad block could be just fucking up. Here we go. Okay, here we go. All right. So there's a motion that was um there's a motion filed that they want the judge to hear and un and reprimand the prosecutors which is the United States of America which is the AUSAs, right? And they're saying that these people have tainted the prospect of this trial by leaking discovery and they're the only ones that could have it. And also their investigators have made comments to the press that have prejudiced this whole case. So they, they filed a motion to say um, the, the government is playing an effed up game. And they they submitted a, it's called memorandum in law in support of the motion to basically just explain why they are filing the motion, right? So... By the way, I'm sorry for the sniffling chat. I don't know how the fuck I'm, I'm like mad nasally right now. Anyway, defendant Sean Combs moves for four forms of relief related to what the defense feels was a series of unlawful government leaks, which have led to damaging, highly prejudicial, um, a pretrial uh, publicity that could only taint the jury pool and deprive Mr. Combs of his right to a fair trial. Okay, Mr. Combs requests number one a evidentiary hearing to examine if the government has engaged in misconduct in connection with the leaks. Number two, the discovery of emails, documents, and records in possession of the government, including DHS. By the way, they're thinking this is coming from HSI slash DHS, Department of Homeland Security, and uh, HSI, which is Homeland Security. Uh, what the fuck is HSI saying for? Homeland Security. And, I forgot what the, the, the I stands for. Um, yeah, so that's who they think leaked the Cassie tape. And then they want a gag order prevent, uh, prohibiting the government personnel from disclosing any evidence or investigative material related to this case to any member of the media. And number four, suppression of any evidence leaked by the government um, in violation of federal rule, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is important, okay? Diddy is... Diddy's lawyers are trying to essentially get the Cassie tape thrown out. How could they get the Cassie tape thrown out? They would have to they would have to prove or at least have a judge agree with them that this information that got leaked came from the feds. The purpose was to taint the jury pool or taint the minds of how people perceive Diddy, which could taint his trial. And if that's the case, that evidence could be suppressed. Now, if he gets this motion granted, huge win. 
Because, again, this, even though the jury pool has probably seen this, everybody in the world has seen, like, this whole, like, Diddy beating up Cassie footage. But what, what it would do is that this footage can't be used to establish maybe the violent nature or the nature of Diddy that might be someone who was, you know, on the video he's dragging her back to the room, which kind of corroborates the the account that sex trafficking is, you know, also having people, bringing people to, to places against their will, but also they can't leave because nothing that they willfully would want to do, they're allowed to do. So they want to suppress this evidence, right? Based on the fact they think the government leaked it. Um, I don't know if they'll get proof of that, but they're, they're trying to submit it, right? Anyway, they said the available evidence makes a, a prima facie, a prima facie, I don't know how to say that right, but I'm familiar with the term, um, that shows the government primarily through DHS has engaged in a seven-month campaign with three objects, preventing Mr. Collins from getting a fair consideration by the grand jury. By the way, remember, they leaked that during the grand jury, right? Or, or around the time the grand jury was convened. Preventing him from getting a fair trial and three strategically leaking a confidential grand jury material information, including 2016 intercontinental videotape in order to prejudice the public against and potential jurors against Mr. Combs. The government's scheme to undermine uh, his right to a fair proceeding has several methods and means. First, there's been a steady stream of false and prejudicial statements made by DHS agents to various press outlets, right? Um, second, the agents engage in a particularly bu brutal and public search of his homes during which they handcuff his innocent sons and then march them before a news helicopter in the press. This is apparently an effort to convey that they had overwhelming evidence against Combs, justifying the public and brutal treatment of his, even his children who was handcuffed and manhandled by federal agents with assault rifles. Third, the government employees have repeatedly leaked grand jury information and materials to press um, to raise public hostility towards Combs in advance of his trial. The most egregious example is the leak to CNN. Of the 2016 videotape from the Intercontinental Hotel in L uh, Los Angeles. As detailed below, the CNN leak was but one of long and documented history of leaks and false statements with one purpose to s savage or sabotage, I would guess, sabotage his reputation prior to the trial. What does it say to savage? Maybe that's a typo. Sabotage? his reputation prior to trial. While the government misconduct in this case is particularly egregious, it's unfortunate that part of the trend in this district, the government has learned that it can strategically leak information with impunity. The court should exercise its authority to prohibit these underhanded tactics, which severely undermines a criminal defendant's right to, go, to have a fair trial. At the outset, the defendant the defense wants to be clear with the court as to what our theory is and what it is not. We do not contend the leaks were orchestrated by the U.S. Attorney's Office. Rather, we contend the false media statements and grand jury leaks were co com uh, leaks complained of. What? Contain what? Com oh, complained of below were planned and executed by DHS, which obviously is a uh, that's Department of Homeland, Homeland Security. And the parties, as the parties develop more information in this regard, the court will see that the defense repeatedly contacted the prosecutor and stated in substance that their agents were leaking information to the press. Yet, regardless of what, if any action of the U.S. Attorney's Office took, um, the leaks continued even until after the arrest. The reason a hearing is needed to determine exactly what DHS did and did not do regarding these leaks and what the U.S. Attorney's Office did and did not do to stop them, the evidence of the government misconduct is clear enough um, already that the court is justified in using its authority to craft appropriate remedies. He requests the court's order um, um, discovery and evidentiary hearing to investigate the government's misconduct. The abuse here is clear, but without a hearing, it would remain unknown how far the abuse reach. Okay. So what they're trying to do is kind of do what was done in the Alec Baldwin case. Alec Baldwin beat his his case primarily because there was Brady material, right? So there was some material that probably could have worked in his favor that the prosecutors did not disclose to him because that evidence was suppressed. 
Well, actually, it was more than suppressed because the the judge found that it was the the prosecutors were in violation of his rights by not disclosing that information to him. They actually dismiss the case. the 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 penalty was dismissing a case with with prejudice, right? And with prejudice means you can't file again. So that's why Alec Baldwin is actually clear for allegedly killing somebody on the set of a movie. Anyway, so uh, they give a whole background, but they're basically saying that the government leaked the shit. Uh, it's 17 pages. And yeah, that's the whole thing. They believe, they believe that the government leaked a whole bunch of shit. So they're, they're talking about uh, if, if a person is not in law enforcement or to leak the videotape to a news source, that person would have sold the tape rather than give it to CNN. So they're making very clear distinctions. If this was not a law enforcement person, they would have just gave it, they would have sold it to TMZ. TMZ pays tens of thousands of dollars for the footage. And the fact it was leaked to CNN shows that the motive was not financial gain. CNN doesn't necessarily pay or we don't know them to pay for that footage. It shows a motive to damage his reputation without re re renew, uh, remuneration, a motive held by the federal agents. Fourth, the timing of the leak suggests government involvement. The, the tape was leaked on one of the few days uh, the Trump trial was not being held as Baron Trump and Donald Trump's youngest son graduated high school that day um, with his father in attendance in Florida. One of the more contentious issues in the Trump trial was whether the trial was going to be stayed so Trump could. So basically they said that the whole week everyone was covering Trump. Trump gets a day off from court to go to a graduation or that was supposed the day he was going to go to a graduation. And essentially that's when they chose to leak the, the, the footage, which means that it's the government who probably already is, you know, very aware of what's big in the media and they wanted to make the biggest um, um, splash, okay? Eventually, the court announced that May 17 would not be a trial day, blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. The video was leaked to CNN for one reason alone, to mortally, to mortally wound the reputation of uh, or the prospect of Sean Combs defend himself. Okay, good, good. All right. So, yeah, they essentially want, and it's a request of relief, they want uh, evidentiary hearing. Second, they want the court to order that relevant discovery, um, which means emails and text messages from any government attorneys or law enforcement agents regarding these leaks should be, you know, put out and or at least, you know, reviewed. Third, the court wants to immediately enter order forbidding government attorneys to speak on this further to the media. And I think the fourth one is to um, to disqualify and suppress the evidence included. And this is the biggest thing. They want the 2016 video of Diddy beating up Cassie to be suppressed so it can't be used in the trial. So, you know, they're trying. They're, they definitely are trying. Um, will that work? I got to imagine whether it's DHS. We all know the Southern District of New York don't play. It's not their first rodeo. If they leaked this footage, which, I mean, at this point, we could probably assume that maybe they did. They knew exactly what was going to happen in court. So they probably did in a way where they're not going to be caught with their hand in the cookie jar. So, again, Diddy's lawyer is filing the, the motion to say, let's punish him for it. But how could they prove the government did it? Who knows, right? But um, in an interesting note, Did y'all see this chat? So, Alex Spiro. So, Alex Spiro, remember, remember we, we looked at um, Piers Morgan who admitted, right? Look, Piers Morgan admitted that Jay-Z, Piers Morgan, Jay-Z, Beyonce. He admitted that Jay-Z and Beyonce's team reached out to him. And essentially, he was apologizing, right? Like, he literally apologized to Jay-Z and Beyonce for, you know, really platforming. Let me see. For platforming um, Jaguar, right? 
And let's see if we could figure this out. Why my computer be just every time it has to use this fucking ad blocker? Sorry. Here we go. So if we go to Piers Morgan, right? Is it is it here? Is it here? No, no, no. Let's go. Give me a second. Is it here? No. Is it this? No. This? No. This? No. Right here. I think this is this. Here we go. So they start off with a pause. A songwriter who's made claims about life or nearly for the rest of his life. I think he has an out option and that is popping a cyanide pill. If he no, wanted choke. to kill himself, yeah. he would have been dead already. But no. choke, but choke, I mean, you might have said the same thing about Jeffrey Epstein. Well, well you, you didn't wait for the best part yet. He's going to be indicted for the murder of Tupac and the notorious B.I.G. The shocking allegations leveled at Sean Diddy Combs have burst the floodgates on salacious claims about an industry many people believe harbored a monster. Understandably, the internet's ablaze with claims about these events and whether other powerful figures... Watch. He's going, to now, he's going to now apologize to Beyonce and Jay-Z. Jaguar Wright, a singer-songwriter who's made claims about Diddy for years. Those claims have already received a lot of attention in the media across many platforms for many years. And that's the thing about platforms. The reality of the modern world is that pretty much everyone has a platform as long as they have something to say that other people want to hear. That's why we invited her on to be interviewed. The people making these claims have an audience with or without shows like mine. Well, Jay, you were right, unexpectedly made several serious allegations about Jay-Z and Beyonce during that interview. As I said in the moment, they were not present to respond or defend themselves. But now they have. Their lawyers contacted us to say that those claims were totally false and have no basis in fact. And we've therefore complied with the legal request to cut them from the original interview. Editing, editing interviews is not something we do lightly at a show called Uncensored. Uh, but, like the proverbial cries of fire in a crowded theatre, there are legal limits on us too. And we apologise to Jay-Z and Beyonce. Damn. <laughs> Folded like a lawn chair. Jay-Z and Beyonce, I'm sorry we even brought someone on to try to check your temperature. Hell nah. Now, why did that happen? Apparently, Alex Spiro, and remember, I keep telling you, Alex Spiro is Jay-Z's lawyer, which, by the way, there's something going on here. Remember, I, I told you, Jay-Z's Jay lawyers also represent Tupac's estate in investigating to see if Diddy had anything to do with his death. Remember, why would, why would Jay-Z's lawyer be representing somebody trying to pile on onto Diddy unless they don't fuck with Diddy no more? Or maybe they're trying to send a message to Diddy to say, Make sure you keep your fucking mouth shut while you're locked up. Don't don't think because you locked up it's time to sing because we could make this a whole lot worse. Anyway, Jay-Z's lawyer, Alex Spiro, actually appeared on TMZ. And his appearance on TMZ, he actually explained why, why Piers Morgan apologized. And this was the explanation here. Hold on. Sorry. He is very eager to tell his story. They're gonna uh, is a Comes on. This must have been shocking to you that somebody comes on uh, a show and then kind of levels these vague-ish allegations. Were you kind of ready for something like this to eventually happen? Listen, there's rumors and then there's nonsense and this is one step further, right? This is a pointed and formal accusation of something. Um, and um, I felt it needed to be responded to. So uh, I think somebody reported it was a cease and desist. It, it wasn't that. It was uh, quite bluntly an ultimatum, which is remove that false accusation um, that's demonstrably false um, or a court's going to order you to. And so I think he made the wise choice and acted accordingly. He meaning Piers Morgan. Removing it and apologizing for it, yes. What changed here in my mind is that somebody on a so-called journalistic platform exploited that kind of random rumor mill, whether it's disconnected from reality or what have you, and lifted it up. Um, and by doing that, you know, they not only caused harm here, but they are also droning out the voices of real victims. And by doing that to get clicks, it didn't just harm the Carters. What 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 he did effectively was to drone out the voices of, of actual victims 
in an ongoing case in an ongoing investigation and that was that was too much for me are you in the process of making sure that it is taken down everywhere what i am here to say is that in a situation as serious as this um somebody who puts themselves out as a journalist should not effectively take advantage of the situation and exploit somebody in this way um and so that's that's the real reason for action does it does it strike you a little bit that there's been a lot of silence uh, in Hollywood in the wake of all of this. Well, as to the Carters, you know, I can tell you that when they put their foot down on something as they did here, you know, they are sending a message. And if they can't stand up and, and make sure right from wrong, then who can? I've always believed that the truth will come out in courtrooms and I'm sure the truth will come out here. Okay. This very interesting chat, very motherfucking interesting. Chat, as I've told you, Jay-Z and Beyonce, their lawyer's pretty damn powerful. <clears throat> I don't know why I keep, I keep sneezing. I'm so sorry, Chad. Jay-Z and, and Beyonce's lawyer, Alex Spiro, very fucking powerful. This is a guy who, when everybody thought that ICE was going to keep um, 21 Savage detained, he was going to get deported. <clears throat> what the fuck? I don't know what's going on, Chad. Sorry. <laughs> When everyone thought that was going to happen, Jay-Z assigned Alex Spiro. This guy right here, you know, they're taunting his case. And by the way, he's helping out Mayor Adams right now, the New York City mayor. They're saying he's never lost a case. They're saying this guy, this guy is one of those. And Jay-Z, Jay-Z has him in his pocket. He does the bidding for Jay-Z, whether it's representing someone Jay-Z likes, Jay-Z has interest in. Or if it's somebody who might be Jay-Z want to see fail, he might show up just to represent the other person just to make sure that other person fails, right? You know, this guy is really powerful. And when you hear him talk, when you hear him talk like this, you know this guy is speaking from a position of power. He said, I didn't send him a cease and desist. By the way, I think what he said is worse. He said, I gave it an ultimatum. I didn't even tell him a cease and desist. I gave an ultimatum. Now, a cease and desist isn't a legal document. A cease and desist is usually, it's a notice, right? It's a notice that if you continue this behavior or you don't remedy that behavior, we intend to pursue you legally. He didn't say, oh, I said that, which, which is usually kind of outline shit. He says, I gave him an ultimatum, which means Piers Morgan just got bullied. But this just show you how powerful Jay-Z and Beyonce's lawyer has a reach. Sorry. Right. This is Were you ready for something like this to eventually happen? Listen, there's rumors and then there's nonsense. And this is one step further, right? This is a pointed and formal accusation of something. Um, and um, I felt it needed to be responded to. So... I think somebody reported it was a cease and desist. It, it wasn't that. It was uh, quite bluntly an ultimatum, which is remove that false accusation um, that's demonstrably false um, or a court's going to order you to. And so I think he made the wise choice and acted accordingly. He meaning Piers Morgan. Removing it and apologizing for it, yes. What changed here in my mind is that somebody on a so-called journalistic platform exploited that kind of random rumor mill now remember we were talking about this whole thing yo why don't jay-z sue uh, um jaguar right i'm pretty sure they've they've maybe reached out to her to say yo stop the bullshit or we're gonna sue you it's either two things they've reached out she's ignored it or well, actually three things second of all they haven't reached out because they know she don't got no money so Threatening a lawsuit to somebody who don't got money is like basically threatening to waste your own time. Or number three, they don't want to go to court with her because she might have more to say. And then she could at least use her legal right to then have Jay-Z actually have to answer to certain shit through a deposition. So it's a very interesting thing. But it's interesting. This is the first time we've seen um, Alex Spiro pop out, and he popped out in a major way. 
Piers Morgan, if you look at Piers Morgan's channel, everything he's doing, I ain't gonna lie, Piers Morgan, he's like, he's like white Shannon Sharp. Everything he's doing is getting major views. Look, 1.5 million a day ago, 1.2 million a day ago, 750K, like most most of all, 360, uh, 3, uh, 3.6 million for that interview in question. He is like doing really huge numbers and I think for him, you know what? And I, I'm pretty sure he has some type of counsel. Why go to war with the Carters? Especially when it's over some shit that Jaguar Wright said, right? Now, this is also one of the reasons why I think that Vlad has never interviewed her. Regardless, because, you know, she has a lot to say about Sean Diddy Combs. Like, you're still going to have people who are very interested in what she said. Did you see her last interview? She just did another interview. She she did another interview. Like, lo look at this. Came out yesterday. I watched them. Yo, th by the way, I know she's probably charging for interviews right now. Look, it did a million in a day. Yo, chat, look. Look, she started looking like a diva now. She got glasses on. Look at her. Listen to this shit. A video of a, of, of an interview of a Justin Bieber, and he was talking about Billie Eilish. Mm. And he was like, he was broke, almost in tears. He's like, I just want to protect her. I just want to keep her safe. Yeah. Um, Let's take a shot, Chad. What, it, what, what do you think he went through? Where because he, feels he knows like what's been happening to Billy. Just like everybody knew what was happening to Millie. Bobby Brown, girl, with Drake. What? These people are monsters. Stop. <laughs> that's my that's my thing with her. Yo, she had clear, you know, association. Like we seen her singing for Jay Z. I know people were mad. They were like, Yo, act. How didn't you, know? bro? Like, I didn't I, I didn't know she was the person who was singing in, on the unplugged thing. But like, come on, like, why we acting like she was a huge deal? Relax. Anyway, the the thing with her is. And I think this is a this is a symptom of the Me Too era. To get credibility, all you have to do is claim everybody is a monster. Chris Brown monster, Drake monster, Jay Z monster, Diddy monster. They're all monsters. And now because we do see Diddy in trouble, we're like, really? Tell me more. We give a platform. There's a million people watching the day. We keep hearing more and more shit. And again, it's different if she was around these people. But I don't know if she's ever met Drake or Chris Brown. I heard her say things about Drake and Chris Brown. I was like, have you met him? Like, how are you speaking on? It's one thing to be like, I've heard that that these guys do X, Y, and Z. She don't speak like that. And I, I think that's what, what Dame Dash was saying. She don't be speaking in the, oh, I heard this. She speaks in this, I know this. Oh, look, they put a disclaimer. Wow, see? The information provided by the, the speaker or presenter on the um, IDAC platform is for general information or purposes only. All information provided is in good faith. However, make no representation or warranty of any kind um, expressed or implied regarding the accuracy. Okay, see? see I'm going to be honest with you. This is where we get to bullshit. We start chasing clicks over chasing, like, if you got to put this type of, like, disclaimer, it's like you saying, I ain't going to lie to you. We don't even really believe this chick. We, we just think it's entertaining and it's going to get us clicks. Like, come on, bro. Like, she's talking about things and making allegations that would purport and also encourage people to go, go to jail for life. Like, if you're putting this, like, disclaimer, like, it's not like you don't believe it. Real life three stars. Hold on. They might not have saw this coming, but I'm sure they saw it coming. It's been three days. <laughs> three point, mm. three point something million on Pierce Morgan. And Jaguar Wright has the world's attention as we speak. Um, the last time we spoke, it was virtually. Yeah. And uh, Diddy had been uh, arrested, which made the world stop 
Yeah. And take a moment and say, wait a minute. There's been a lady speaking about these mm-hmm. things for years. He turned the whole world into Ray J. Wait a minute. Yup, he did. Yeah, he did. And first and foremost, we have to say uh, we appreciate you coming here next because that gives us validity in the sense that Pierce Morgan, thank you. But really this moment right here is where we really get what y'all are coming here to see. And what we call, um, what, what, what would you call this kind of information that you put out, Jag? What? Real shit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now, before oh. we get started, uh, I'm looking at your drip. I'm looking at your clothing. Yeah. And that looks somewhat, is that, ha- is that Haley, Haley Bailey? <laughs> well, someone asked me <laughs> where to get this T-shirt from because they thought it was okay, let's... Haley Bailey. <coughs> yes. 23-year-old Jaguar Wright, Miss 7th Avenue. My stores say, I love her. Here's in lapse, time, gap. And yet, she looked like me. This is what they do to us. Then they keep creating replica. Come on. Come on. Our fans who really want to um, also support you, you know, of course, uh, yeah. you know, you have your own support system as far as uh, Jaguar Wright and the Jaguar Wright Foundation, wherever she And wants my to legal go. defense fund, which Correct. is most imperative right now. Ooh. Um, with two business deals, two companies, Profits Plus, BB Films, and View It. Both of them were brought to me by people that I considered trusted allies, and both deals were corrupted. Now, I'm not going to blame the people that brought the deals to me. It, this this caption says Dame Dash sued CFA, which I think maybe is the company that owns this this channel. How could I expect them to know? But to consistently keep being courted to do business with people who keep things secret, like oh yeah, we work with Rock Nation, or oh yeah, Cuba Gooding Jr. full on Diddy do I bop sits on the board. If I had have heard those names in those first meetings, there's no way I would have gone through with those deals. I don't do business with people who do business with the devil. So why did they keep it secret? Why did I have to find out? Why did I have to do extra research that wasn't available upon meeting these companies? And I'm gonna tell you why. Because my enemies pay good money to make sure I can't be successful. Okay. And if you don't believe me, ask Dame Dash. Ooh, here we go. Ooh, okay. That's what's been happening to him. Hi, Dame. Oh, stay right there. Stay right there. So Thanks we'll for the shout out. Oh, here we go. Sorry you've been getting sued. I haven't. And, and, and we're going to go back to Dame because he said, you know, how come they haven't sued Jaguar Wright? A lot of people are saying that. So let's just start with Pierce Morgan because mm-hmm. there's a headline that went out that was very powerful that people are running with where it just says, Jay-Z is the real monster. Now, before you speak Mm -hmm. on it, to even get to Pierce Morgan, can you explain how that took place and why even take that interview uh, to go forward? Well, (coughs) excuse me. Bless us. I can't say that I sought it out because I didn't. Truth is, is we didn't see it coming. Hey. I'm trying to say this without coming off as a hypocrite because I run a news platform, right? And sometimes in the moments of the biggest misfortunes, like, for example, I remember we had 72,000 people watching just just King Academics when we were listening and waiting for the deliberation and the reading of the Tory Lane's verdict, which ultimately went to prison so i do know because you know and and that's been my thing right like i'm the news guy 
Like you guys used to watch me or listen to me before you ever heard my, my voice and be like, it's boy checking it. Like you heard that a million times. And I do know that when big news, whether positive or negative, like, you know what I mean? A lot of people tune in. So let's just break even that down, right? By the nature of things, I do get paid when there are big headlines. I get paid more, I guess, when there's big headlines or big things that's happening because more people come. That's something I acknowledge. But I acknowledge it where I'm not... And, and, and again, I, I'm saying this because I want to be a hypocrite in what I'm about to say. I acknowledge this because it, it's different because I also have the ability to create stories if I want. Like I, there's, there, there's, I keep telling you, I, I have a, I have everybody's secrets. If I just want to go break story after story and just, you know, I could, but that's not really what I do, right? So I, I generally kind of just react and, and I kind of go off of the natural cycle of things. And, you know, if something happened, that's what it is. And, 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 and I use that to admit how, you know, I don't want to be a hypocrite, but but, but I, I, I want to address like the Jaguar rights. And I remember talking to Vlad and I said, Vlad, you know, once you start paying these people for interviews, you fucked up the game. Because this was when he was talking about the Marlon Wayans thing. And he was like, oh. And I completely guess the business model, right? Well, Vlad, Vlad is making tens of thousands of dollars for some, some of these interviews, of course. Like, you know, after a while, shit, you should pay your guests. Especially when, you know, for me, it's, it's a quid pro quo. Like, which means we're, we're exchanging. Like, when I interview 21 Savage or if I interview um, Vaughn of 1700 or I interview any of these rappers... They're looking for additional eyes and promotion for their music. In exchange for doing the interview, that interview for me becomes content, right? So they're getting free promotion. I'm getting content. So I don't generally like to pay anyone. Truth be told. I think once I go down the realm, and but that's just my, my mentality. Once you go down the realm of paying people, you start seeing very different things. Now, let, let me explain what's happening on YouTube. Shout out to Charleston White. Like, Charleston White's one of those guys, and I, I think he deserves every dollar. He he gets paid because he'll do an interview with a channel with 300, uh, 300 subscribers, and after that interview, because the interview is still going to do half a million at least, that, that channel going to blow up to be like 30,000 subscribers just off of that. So he should be compensated. Now, I extrapolate that thought to like someone like Jaguar Wright. Jaguar Wright is at the point now, and I don't know what her financial condition was before. If you think Jaguar Wright isn't getting paid handsomely for all these interviews she's doing, you're smoking crack. Now, I'm not upset, or nor do I really give a fuck if people pay for interviews. But let's think about the Jaguar rights, the gene deals. And I'm not saying no one's lying. But if you're getting paid and your payment, this is how you're now making a living. It's predicated on you having and exposing the industry or telling these tales that are saying people are monsters. Does it ever get to the point that you say, Okay, I already expo exposed all the monsters. Um, these other guys that I've never met, uh, I, I don't know enough about them. To, or do you just double down? Or do you just continue, <clears throat> sorry, continue to kind of go down the realm of whatever you believe that people want to hear? Because at the end of the day now, when you see her show up with the glasses and she's like, you know, this is, if, if Jaguar Wright's getting six figures for talking about this shit now, facts. You think if she cares about now her new income stream to continue, you think she's not trying to say things or do more shit to have it continue? 
Or do you think at this point she's just here to get the truth out and she just wants to see people? Or is she having... Do you get what I mean? Now, I use that to say, remember what we said about some of these lawsuits? We got real victims who they were really wronged by Diddy. And they're suing because for whatever reason, they couldn't get that get him locked up, I guess, right? But then you got some of those people who, shit, if, if the money's being given out, let me get it. There's a couple, listen, there going to be a couple of chicks who said, nah, shit. I was down with a freak off back then, but shit, if everybody taking this nigga down, I'm about to change my story. I need some money too. And I'm wondering when it comes to like Jaguar, right? I'm like, are we still at the point? Because you'll watch someone like Jaguar, right? Start developing main character syndrome. Like she, okay. We're all going to give her credit for speaking about Diddy before everyone else took focus on him. But as time goes by, you realize she's basking in this almost newfound celebrity attention and this pay-to-play economy for these interviews she's doing. You start to see the demeanor change. It starts to be a lot more of about, it's like a second wind at what is about fame. And again, I'm not saying any of this to like make her look or sound any crazy, but I'm wondering if that taints the process of, because I remember hearing Jaguar Wright for the first, the first time, even Gene Neal, their thing was, I just want to tell the truth. And that is so innocent. When someone says, I didn't have a voice before. I just want to tell the truth. After a while though, it becomes, well, this is now your new career. How much you think Gene Neal gets a year to do interviews? Speaking about Diddy. Keep in mind, if he's not speaking about Diddy, I don't know how interested he is. How many? How much you think Jaguar Wright is here? So again, how much could they still give new information that they haven't said in the other 40 interviews they done did? If they want to keep getting a check, they got to come up with new shit. Now, maybe they're just good at recollecting some shit they never said before. Or maybe. Exactly. All right. But I have to credit Odell. Got to Odizi. My love. I, I have to credit him because since we've combined and joined forces and become a hell of an investigative journalism team. See, I'm the content. I'm the passion, I'm the voice. I'm also the brain, but I do too much by myself. See, once we get to the point where like, she's talking about the business model of exposing these guys. You see, it always starts off pure where you're like, oh no, these they're, they're just doing the right thing. They're speaking against somebody powerful. Then you realize now, this is a business. This is a six-figure income generator that they're now creating a team around. And how much of this is still pure versus how much of this is we need to continue the business? That's the brain. That's the administrator. That's the bloodhound. Um, and he, you know, there I'm was- I'm going to skip to the Vlad part real quick. I had going after you. Never have enough to say. There will never be enough screen time for me to say. But what I will say is I'm grateful for the questions he asked. I'm grateful for the time he gave me to answer. And I pray that I was able to hit everything that needed to be hit for the public. How did you feel about um, Vlad going after you? I loved it. I saw the lineup immediately. Right. Especially when I saw the lawyer, Ariel, kid that came after. Right. What Pierce did was brilliant journalism. Right. He created a beef without there being one. And he created multiple episodes for confrontation <laughs> after. It's brilliant. It is, uh, 
uh, Vlad has said um, you're a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. He has never wanted you on a show. He has Ever. He out to you. You know what? Hold up. Drum roll. Where do I find that receipt? Oh, 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 we got, is there? Mm -hmm. oh, on, on, on the email. Let me check. Yeah, is, there's receipts? No, I, it's on your YouTube, right? Yeah. Oh, So yeah. let me go over here to my baby's channel, Set in the West. Shout out to Shout Set, out Set in the West. Shout out to Set in the West, uh, uh, running the numbers up. Go there for all the exclusive. All the exclusive. You yeah. know, it's so funny. I, I love bigging his channel up. Yeah. I love it. I do. I love it. I love having... Up, you know, going from flash. Right? I mean, didn't subscribe on this phone. No, because I <laughs> hold on. Let's see. Okay. Let's. Is that it? Uh, oh, the Bluetooth. We don't have any. Everyone knew she was the devil. Fine, I would go, but there is a party within a party. Yeah. This is gonna fuck you up. AKA, uh, what's your name, bro? Vlad Vladimir. Um, Boosty. <laughs> it's Vladimir. Rasky. Vladimir. Vladimir. Come at you as a. Before vlogging. Carpet. Compton, but why just Bompton? Okay, anyway. Running around from tin rooftop to tin rooftop, playing your little weird. Considering everything that's going on with the Israelis right now and the war and the this and the that. You know, seems like you would be more interested in that, like Mina, Mila Kunis and. Before he came on, what is his thoughts on you? Before they put him on, I'm sure they checked. So, but the thing is, is makes for good this, TV. The only it, it's great TV. I like I said, I thought it was brilliant. But the thing is, is the only way that he could have been cloaked from a vetting team as fierce as Pierce Morgan's. All right, let's get to. He, she's talking about 50 J Kendrick. What the fuck? Let's hear this. This guy. Damn. Curtis. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, right, so you can find him in the club. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Wait. So let me ask you. When Pierce Hopefully Mo not at Coco Pele. Damn. Damn. I got somebody Damn. looking for you there. Damn. Uh, I know you're tight, Curtis. You gonna fall for one of my niggas real soon. See if you figure out which one. Oh my god! So I had somebody watching your ass the second you came down to the clerk's office. Now you might have been able to pay everybody down there to get on Facebook and lie about me and say that I was arrested for kidnapping and elderly abuse. Y'all remember when I got arrested and brought here to Dallas yes. after I got extra dude? What was it for kidnapping and elderly abuse? Now she's calling out 50 Cent. Now, you know what I've noticed, chat? And I start to realize, let me tell you this, when you open Pandora's box, and sometimes, you know, I forgot the law that applies to this in the, in the 48 Laws of Power. Sometimes you want to see somebody fall. But, you know, in, in Jamaican terms, I've always said, I, I, I love this term because it's true. They said, when you, they said when you dig a grave, make sure you dig two. You dig one for the person you hate and dig one for you too. Because sometimes when you're so focused on trying to sink somebody, you also sink yourself. And what I've realized is that, you know, 50 has been one of the main contributors to seeing um, Diddy go down. And um, Diddy be, you know castrated and and and, and kind of ousted as like this creep but the more these lawsuits keep coming out what have we seen two of the people not only not only 50 but also gene deal they're like oh, wait hold on now some of this shit i ain't gonna i know i've been saying this nigga's weird and he did do a b and c but i'm not gonna quote you know you you, you know what where that comes from that comes from those people realizing you're not that removed and you're not that protected either. It's only a matter of time before somebody mentions that Gene Deal was in some shit. Or somebody mentions that 50 was in, maybe not some shit with Diddy, but somebody makes an allegation. So you gotta, you can't be the person that's accepting that every bull, well, I won't call it bullshit, but every allegation is right. Because it could happen to you too. And 
We've seen how Gene Deal kind of back pill, but I seen Fifty himself. Fifty, what did Fifty say? Fifty posted even something recently, and he called it out. He said, "Yo, this is bullshit." Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Uh, where's the fifty post? Where's the fifty post? Fuck. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find it. Where Where is it? Am I tripping? Like he essentially said. Oh, here it is. Right here. Okay. You want to say? Okay, so 50, he said, um, okay, okay. Um, he said, did he go make bail his next, well, it wasn't this one. He's going to make bail his next court days, so all that shit y'all been saying, keep the same energy, don't y'all even try to take that post down. Um, that wasn't the one, actually. He had called out BS, where is it, like, ugh, fuck. I don't have my ducks in order today, Chad. I, I know, I know, I know, I, I, like, to, I like to have all my, things but i just instantly thought of this so i don't have this like prepared but he called out some shit and he said yo this is bullshit let me see um 50 cent did he calls like he called he, he called it bs he called out one of these one of these allegations and he was just like this is a lie right oh yeah he says caught this bitch lying right and um so you put up the Stalia Graves joint, and um, it says TMZ had obtained a text exchange between the Diddy accuser, her, Thalia Graves, and her ex-boyfriend, where she offered him up to seven million, or not seven million, but seven figures to corroborate her claim. And 50's now coming, looking like he's almost kind of like saying, all right, man, yo, we already got Diddy down, he's locked up, like, but some of these other claims is bullshit. Because you know what happens is that the pylon method happens. And, and he has to, I don't think he cares about Diddy. I think 50 realizes that you're not impervious to this. I think Gene Deal realizes that the same way how you tried to sink Diddy, after a while, they're going to get Joe, Big Joe Sherman, and eventually somebody's going to say Gene Deal. Just like 50's realizing that you're now creating an environment where women who have had maybe any type of sexual experience with a, a, a rapper or someone who they feel got the bread they're gonna come out with a different story and guess who got bread too you so i i, I seen 50 start to kind of like change his tune slightly and i'm like mm, okay interested yes it was no it was for me being a fugitive oh yeah fugitive because dj genesis made me a fugitive when she pretended to be Angela Owusu and broke my bond. Okay, went go. to and talked to and told them about me wanting to run for mayor. Why to manipulate the circumstances of what's supposed to happen at the Super Bowl? What? My well, Pierce Morgan is saying he's not here to defend himself. So no, uh, we're, we're gonna... and neither is his asshole. <coughs> I'm over Curtis. I'm over Curtis. No, he's going there. <laughs> and, uh, and, he's going there. Because the only reason he's kissing up to Jay-Z right now, trying to manipulate the circumstances of what's supposed to happen at the Super Bowl. What? See, Diddy's in jail. Jay-Z's used to having a wingman. You think it's going to be you? Mm. Mm. Now everybody knows in the backdrop, Sean Carter, that you promised the South that the next time the Super Bowl came through, it would be a Louisiana affair. And then when Diddy goes and gets into trouble and you need to convince the white people you're still in control, you bring Kendrick Lamar, who we already know you don't like for the way he embarrassed you on Don't Kill My Vibe, the remix. Mm. Hey, but we also know Up in the you got ties in TDE, what? Sean Carter, and you got a switch on top. 
I know that. I know that for a fact. Just like why you keep having artists that want to jump off of high places. Shout out to Ab Soul. Bozo, thank you for the 50 um, pounds. I appreciate you. You said, Ak, you're a trustworthy journalist who's pretty much accurate on a lot of stuff, but 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 it's, it's also a business. We saw your cars. She has a voice to expose other predators now like Jay-Z and Drake and to get paid. Nothing wrong with that. Bozo, this is why I admitted the fact that I don't want to seem a hypocrite when I'm when I'm saying what I'm saying about her. So I talked about, hey, I do run um, a news channel or I do a news podcast or a news news stream. I get it. So like in times when there is a big news story, I do get ridiculous numbers. Right. Which in, 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 in terms turns to ridiculous pay. I am agreeing with you. Here's my point. Her knack is to is is really the Jay Z and Diddy stuff which she's been speaking about. It's one thing where you, where you're speaking on maybe firsthand um, knowledge of these people. I don't know if she knows Chris Brown, and I know y'all might be like, "Oh no, it's because she mentioned Drake." It's just like, here's my point. Jaguar Wright also said that, like, um, said that Joe Budden was fucking some dude. And Joe Budden, <coughs> I forgot who she said he was fucking. But even Joe Budden was just like, yo, I was actually believing a lot of the stuff you were saying until you just randomly threw me in it. You have to you have to realize at a point it, it's impossible that this woman knows every predator, every nefarious evil person in the industry, and at a point she becomes just like someone who's cynically just mentioning people's names. I believe I like, will give her the benefit of the doubt. I see her with Jay Z. Whatever she said about Jay Z, she knows more than me. I say that same thing about Sean Combs when she's mentioning certain other people. I don't know if she was even around. Oh. Oh. What was her name? Um, like, like, put like this. She's talking about how the Super Bowl this year should go with Kendrick and TDE and Jay-Z. Like, again, do you think she's speaking from a place of, oh, she knows? Or maybe she's also, like, speculating a bit. Maury, a Lori Joe. That woman threw herself from a control tower and impaled herself with spikes right before she was about to sign the TDE. <laughs> okay, Bozo, I'll ask you this question. By the way, Bozo, that's the name of the guy. I'm not called by Bozo. Let me tell you this. You see, y'all gonna jack what Jaguar Wright says until she starts saying shit that you're like, what the fuck is she talking about? All right, cool. You, 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 you know my favorite game? All right, bet. Y'all right. Y'all got me. Uh, yeah, I'm hating. Cool. All right, bet. She said TDE on some weird shit. What's up? What up? Y'all believe her now? TDE's on the weird shit. Y'all believe her? Or now is she lying? Because she's now mentioning and kind of alluding to Hip Hop Jesus, which is Kendrick. She's saying that they're on the weird shit are y'all saying that she's lying now? If if you're saying we should believe her, she's saying they're weird too. What's up? It's always you anytime you see people be like, no, no, let them talk, let them talk. Somebody like this is she's she doesn't really have the wherewithal to realize you can't say Kendrick and Kendrick people is weird because Kendrick is hip hop Jesus. He could do no wrong. So even the people who are rocking with you, the moment you say hip hop Jesus Kendrick is it, doing some weird shit, you're like, oh hell no! Nah. Alright, now she's lying. Now she's lying. So chat, y'all tell me if she tell the truth about Drake, Jay Z, Diddy, Chris Brown. Now she's mentioning Jay uh, uh, on Kendrick. She tell the truth too, right? <laughs> oh. oh, what was her name? Amori. Amori. A Lori Joe? Oh. 
That woman threw herself from a control tower and impaled herself with spikes right before she was about to sign the TDE. And her fiance, Ab Soul, threw himself off, a, off the freeway out of grief and survived. Why are all of the artists at TDE so unhappy? You guys. As I said, chat, sometimes it'll make you laugh or make you cry. This is the thing with Jaguar Wright. When y'all be like, oh, no, whatever, whatever, because she's talking some crap about Jay-Z and Diddy, she's going to get to your favorite artist, too, who you think is hip-hop Jesus. And the people he grew up around. And the people he came up in this game around. And I know people are like, well, Kendrick's not TDE. Kendrick came up in that system and he he made that label. He put that label on the map in a way where it was a dominant force in the industry. So whatever she's saying, if, if you believe her about them people, that means Kendrick. Which, by the way, I don't believe that. I'm sorry, I don't believe that. Like, I, I just want to tell y'all about... When, when y'all start getting to, in, into this cynicism shit, like, oh, no. Like, she knows everything about. you. Y'all are down to believe shit until she mentions the person you love. That's my point. Some of the best artists in the West there. Why did Kendrick Lamar feel the need to leave and start his own? And why is he able to release more records now that he's not at TDE? released one album and and three diss songs he ain't released much more music than he was releasing on tde damn dropped in 20 in 2017 2022 we get motherfucking mr morale and the big steppers for two years after that we're in 2022 we have maybe three or four features right Three or four feet. No, all right, let, let's say a little bit more because he was doing, but, but definitely less than 10. And we have two diss songs and one album since 2022. He ain't releasing that much music since. Let's be honest. But here's the thing. If y'all want to say y'all believe her, y'all got to, y'all got to now say, if y'all want to say Diddy sick, Jay-Z sick, TD sick. So Interesting. Uh, uh, let me ask you, as you're on this topic. I'll tell you one thing, Curtis Jackson, you are a setup king. And I promise you this, any little nigga that you're enlisting to go down to New Orleans and start trouble during the Super Bowl, that will stop. That will stop. I'm sick and tired of you. And the truth is, they only like you for your money. They So let me ask you, Jack, on a surface level, you're saying that Kendrick being in the Super Bowl versus, let's say, Wayne, which was like a shoe in for the city, that the the in the background, and again, we talked about the mayor, it's a lot more to it than just as simple as, oh, Kendrick's been, a, he had a great year. Social engineering, creating an issue that didn't need to be an issue. Mm. I hear that. Hunger Games like. Very Hunger Games. Life imitates art. Art imitates life. I tell you one thing, it's been almost 30 years since Biggie and Tupac were taken from us. That was social engineering at its finest. It got people in line, didn't it? Without question. Now you think about Drake right now and you think about Kendrick Lamar. That's looking about the same as Biggie Kendrick. I'm Biggie Kendrick Tupac. Drake. You look, think about the comparisons. Yep. Your mental health is a real thing, bro. That is not the same thing at all. 
Biggie and Tupac is nothing like Drake and Kendrick. Imagine. Imagine. Be a gangster playing. Imagine. <laughs> Comparisons. If the same fate that befell Biggie and Tupac happened to Drake and Kendrick. Just and imagine. As, and as messy as, as Drake is right now. I you know what's so funny? The people who run this channel, I could because they're ad libbing behind the scenes. I could tell that they're just doing this shit for views. They don't believe one fucking word they the, uh, she saying. They're putting up all type of disclaimer. They don't believe one fucking word. Like they're, they're just like, all right, it's gonna get some views. Fuck it. I can almost bet that there's somebody that wants to turn his faucet off. Because if y'all think Diddy is a mess, <laughs> Drake, he was being groomed to be next in line, see? What happens when the real details of what happened to Triple X come out? Oh my God. What happens when Jonathan Hay finally starts putting all of the pieces together on why he was putting that home invasion robbery with his daughter? Because he's remembering more now. He's been talking with Truth Is here on YouTube, and he's been saying even more now than he said here. Shout out to Jonathan Hay and your bravery. Shout out Jonathan Hay. We will get him on the couch uh, soon because yeah. uh, his story is one of those stories that might get lost in Hollywood if he was ever silenced. Might get lost, he might get lost. Exactly. Let's make sure he pray doesn't. Yeah, let's pray and protect Jonathan Hay. Uh, Jack, let me ask you um, uh, to kind of put a button on the Pierce Morgan situation. Um, he brought you on to speak on Diddy, and it seemed that it's if your focus turned to Jay-Z, uh, his wife. That's always been my focus. Yes. What? <laughs> They're one and the same. Mm. Tell me something. When you have a peanut butter jelly sandwich, if it's just peanut butter, it's just peanut butter. If it's just jelly, it's jelly. When you put it together, it become a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And, and the taste is undeniable. Mm -hmm. You're saying Diddy and Jay-Z is peanut, peanut butter and jelly? Peanut butter and jelly. Mm. Let's deal with the sandwich. <sighs> we asked you this last time, and Pierce Morgan said it. They're not here to defend themselves. Do you think they will... The Carters will speak about any of this at all? Do you just feel that they'll make any statement about Beyonce what's going on? Beyonce is losing hundreds of thousands, millions of followers every day. And she still hasn't said anything. Just pretending like life is great in Paris. Is it her place to say so? I mean, probably not considering she's going to be indicted for anything she would say. These are criminals. Yo. Diddy is a drug dealer, and so is Jay-Z. Yo, this is crazy. The proof is there. How many up people does he have to be aware of before people see him for who he is? It seems like these artists are trying to run away from their past. Now, Diddy now, changed. I, I, everyone knows every time Diddy's name comes up in something, it's always some freaky issue by the C-Man. Now, in what's new... You feel me? Now, new information is coming out. Diddy lost a lawsuit where he essentially owes a hundred something uh million dollars. That person, I'm not gonna lie, bro, you're never seeing that money. It's sad to say. <clears throat> you're never ever seeing that money ever. Um. Yeah, is is the diddler? You're never seeing that money. Got some of the best lawyers in the world. Um, he's a billionaire, still supposedly. You feel me? He's liquidating his assets now, selling houses and doing all that. But bro, you're not seeing any money. Like, Diddy's the only reason he won the case because Diddy just never went to court. Mm -hmm. That's it. But it's a boy big act news. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and let me know how you guys feel about everything. And I'm out.